Watching the waves crash from the Long Beach Bluff, it's hard to miss the bright red smokestacks of the RMS Queen Mary on the horizon line. The ship, a relic from an era of opulence, is reopening for the first time in three years. She has survived a depression, a world war, the jet age, and at the end of her seagoing career, the shipbreaker's hammer. And now we can add a global pandemic to that list. Oh, we didn't want to miss this when we heard it was opening today. It was like faded to be that we were here on the day it was opening. But first, let's take it all the way back to the beginning. Before it permanently docked in the Long Beach Marina, the RMS Queen Mary served as a commercial cruise liner for the British Cunard fleet. Built in Scotland, it ferried passengers across the Atlantic for over 30 years. After being used to ship materials and soldiers in World War II, it brought a total of 800,000 people on transatlantic expeditions. That's about 2,100 per voyage. By 1967, she was retired from her service and purchased by the city of Long Beach. Transformed into a hotel, museum, restaurant, and bar, the Queen Mary quickly became a go-to tourist attraction. Recently, however, the Queen Mary has started to feel her age. After years of mismanagement, two bankruptcies, and millions of dollars in repairs, the Queen Mary has been closed to the public for the last three years. This is where our story begins. Paint chipping and rust throughout, severe cracks and a failing flood prevention system. In 2020, a list of over 100 necessary renovations and repairs were released. With this and the tenants of six years filing for bankruptcy, the Queen Mary was turned over to the city. Urban Commons LLC had been given the task of maintaining and operating the ship in 2015, but left many of these urgent repairs to worsen. Most publicly, 19 of the Queen Mary's lifeboats had to be destroyed in the spring of 2022. They had been attached at the side of the vessel for 90 years, but started to rot and warp the Queen Mary's hull, bending it outward. In an attempt to salvage the pieces of history, the city auctioned off the lifeboats, but no substantial bids were placed, and all but three of the 22 original lifeboats were destroyed. The city of Long Beach estimated that to start working on critical repairs, including these lifeboats, $5 million would be necessary. A vote was held, and the funds were allocated. But since that allocation, there has been some questions about where that number came from. A city auditor's report in 2021 discussed the misuse of city dollars starting from the previous tenant until now. Robert Seacrest serves as an expert witness on cases regarding the construction and upkeep of marine projects. He says that the city developers didn't bring on the appropriate experts for cost estimation and the execution of repairs on the vessel. Seacrest said as this is a specialty project, it should not have been handled by the General Public Works Department. The government in Seattle created an entire um, agency to build the Safeco field. That's an example of where a government was able to hire an entire team of experts to build a state-of-the-art facility. Furthermore, a conflicting report conducted by the Long Beach Harbor Commission was published in April of 2022. With backing from maritime engineering and environmental service companies, their research found that $236 million would be needed to maintain the ship for the next five years. They projected that the Queen Mary would only produce $38 million in the same amount of time. There was a mayor of Long Beach at one point that described it as a tombstone in a graveyard that nobody goes to visit. John McLaurin, president of the Pacific Merchant Shipping Association, frequently addresses Long Beach City Council on this topic. His organization believes that spending city dollars on the ship doesn't have the port's best interest in mind. It's a very complex issue. It costs an awful lot of money. People are afraid to either fully fund it, which in the case of the Queen Mary is in the hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars, or they're afraid to say, okay, it's, it's, we've seen the run, we've had a good run, it hasn't worked, it's time to move on. Despite criticisms like these, in December of 2022, the city of Long Beach and its new tenants, Evolution Hospitality, announced the reopening of the ship for this spring. Today is the big day. The Queen Mary finally reopens to the public after three years of closure and repairs. Today, Saturday, April 1st, is the soft reopening with tours sold out for families, friends, and tourists alike who are ready and excited to step right back on board. After speeches from the Commodore, we are keenly looking forward to ushering this great vessel back to a vibrant, successful life 
in this year of 2023 and beyond. The inaugural tour group counted down to hearing the RMS Queen Mary's foghorn blare for the first time in three years. Three, two, one. Of course, there was a short delay, in classic Queen Mary fashion. The first weekend of tours sold out completely, with crowds of people excited to get a glimpse of the ship. My oldest sister was on here in 1967, though, so things come full circle. We've missed the Queen Mary. She's so beautiful. And even though there's still a lot more repairs that need to be done, the energy, the vibe in here is so exciting. We've gone through a lot of work over the past year to get the ship ready for tours. More than 800 folks have signed up within the first days of opening up with no promotion. He's been wanting to come here, but since they were refurbishing and it's been closed, uh, we've been telling him just wait, be patient soon. And today we surprised him. Back of the ship, the front of the ship, like everything. I want to see everything. And it's not just for the happy hour enjoyers and ghost tour enthusiasts. The Queen Mary creates 1,300 jobs for Long Beach residents and increases business for neighborhood storefronts. While getting to this point wasn't exactly smooth sailing and the dust hasn't settled yet, the smiling faces we've seen today don't lie. The RMS Queen Mary's legacy lives on. I'm Dan Batson, reporting from Long Beach, California.